Hello there. It is I, Cassandra, the Vintage Arcade Gal, and we are going to talk about stencils in this episode. So stencils on classic arcade games are not common, but they're not totally rare either. A lot of major companies use stencil technology, if you could call it that, for the side art and the front art. It's kind of more of a traditional approach rather compared to a decal uh, for side art on a game. Now, the idea of putting a restoring game with stencils can elicit quite a bit of fear, even in the hardiest arcade game collectors, because stencils are fussy, uh, they can be a little difficult to deal with, and the failure rate can be pretty high if you're not careful. So my hope with this video is this will help you um, your best possible success with re-stenciling. And I would encourage everyone to try stencils at least once uh, despite this. And, you know, it's important to remember too that you can do everything right with stencils and still not be happy with the result. It's just the nature of stencils. Stencils share a lot in common with silk screening. So it's both an art and a science to this stuff, but we're going to walk you through it the best uh, I can. And this topic was actually brought up by my friends at This Whole Game who reached out to me and asked me if I would help one of their clients with some questions about stencils and give some examples. And I realized I'd never really done a video on stencils and I am far from an expert on stencils. I've done it a few times, mostly with success, one time with a colossal failure. So we're just going to go through it. But first, let's talk about the difference between the three major kinds of side art that you tend to see are the techniques that classic arcade games, when I talk about classic arcade games in the golden age from late 1972-ish to 78, which tends to be like the bronze age, all the way up to about 85-ish, you tend to see either decals, a heat layer, mylar process, or stencils. So let's take a look at those three. So side by side here in the arcade, we have to the first technique and the most common you tend to see with modern reproduction. That is just simply decals um, or a giant sticker for the side art. Now, this was common in conversion kits after about 1983, 1984, because obviously decals out of these three techniques are the least expensive to probably manufacture. These were often offset printed or silk screened and just stuck on the cabinet, obviously because of, you know, reproduction capabilities with inkjet printing and things like Photoshop, these are pretty easy to reproduce and people do some really, really nice work around reproduction of these decals. Uh, here we have, this is the actually the original decal from my Rally X. Uh, it's in pretty good shape. Um, and then here we have a reproduction from Mikey that I'm pretty sure this whole game actually did. Now the downside to decals is because they're so inexpensive, they tend to chip and flake. Sometimes people would pick them off you know, uh, and you see a lot of like vintage games that had normally just the decal, like Nintendo titles are pretty common, like Donkey Kong, and they're usually missing or almost halfway gone. It doesn't take a lot to get these off or a game like Valley Midway's Tron that had a pretty elaborate decal and they're usually very banged up and scratched out. These don't really take a ton of abuse. Now, some of the decals actually did go top to bottom on later games like our Simpsons downstairs has a top to bottom decal and um, a lot of later games actually did do that and they're just stick and peel. Uh, so decals, cheap, easy, uh, but you tend to really see the proliferation of this after 84 with some variances here and there. Okay, let's look at the, the second most common version. Now somewhat fancier than a traditional like peel and stick decal is actually mylar heat transfer or a screen transfer, which is what Atari tended to use on their full size cabinets. Now what differentiates this from like just a decal is this used a rather elaborate process of a giant heat press that stuck down the film, colored film, it was multiple layers, onto these side panels or front panels even before they assembled the game. Now the advantage with this was you got this great top to bottom graphic in full color. Uh, they could do a lot of things with design. Maybe you couldn't do quite with a regular decal. And they tend to hold up pretty well. If you look at our, our Liberator recent restoration, 
that mylar heat transfer decal was still, well, it's not really a decal, but was still underneath all that paint, which I don't think you would get that kind of survival from just a regular you know, sticker on there. Now, the disadvantage to this was that it was rather an expensive and labor intensive process. So a lot of manufacturers did not go this route, but Atari in the early 80s, they had tons of money and uh, they had kind of a reputation for producing some really beautiful cabinets. Now, that's not to say Atari also did not actually issue some regular decals. They made their own fair conversion kits, just like our cloak and dagger behind here that just came with traditional decals. But their decals were a little different. They involved these little glass glue beads. They're kind of hard to describe that would crunch when you put the side art down. They were very expensive and very elaborate. Uh, and those little glue beads were designed to perhaps you know, get rid of any air bubbles or inconsistency compared to the standard kind of decals you tend to see now. Again, another very expensive process, so a lot of people didn't utilize that. So let's look at stencils. Uh, a lot of companies use stencils as a default. It's a little tight in here, but just bear with me. So here we have two Valley Midway slash Namco Classics. We have Miss Pac-Man and we have Super Pac-Man both with stenciled from the factory side art and rather elaborately stenciled i might add and if we look we can see that both these neither one of these games has, has ever been restored and we have a lot of fading and and some scratches and and where people will put their hands which is pretty common on pac-man games so they can kind of lean into the game and there's usually a wear spot and this was made by stencils different layering and stencils so we have like on this pack, we have the light baby blue, that's the background, then there was a, a yellow, a pink, and then a black. So pretty extensive stencils, and it looks great, but if you think about it, it's kind of amazing they were able to make this image with basically just three colors, because the background color is kind of a given, but they're able to use a lot of times like a peekaboo uh, for the background color to give a little bit more of a dynamic look to it. And... Same thing here with Super Pack, you know, it's basically three colors. It's the background color that we don't really count. There's a yellow, a red, and a black. Now, this stencil technique, out of all these techniques, is probably actually the most labor intensive. And it dates back to electromechanical games and pinball machines from 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and upwards as a technique for applying art to a door in the cabinet. So you often see this technique on Valley Midway games and games from Williams. And so it won't surprise you that both of those companies have a pretty long history before video games with electromechanical games and pinball machines with that technique. So this is kind of what they knew. Now, stencils, they look great. And every stencil is a little different. You tend to get a little overspray. You tend to get a little variance between stencils, which is actually kind of fun, especially if you're into like the silk screening kind of look like an Andy Warhol kind of deal um, but reproducing these as a one-off for a restoration can be pretty challenging because we don't have access to the tools that they had when they were just chugging these things out right so what do we do well there are a number of reproductions for many common stencils available Thank goodness, but they can be a little crafty to use. So let's take a look at that process. And I'm going to try to give you some, some tips to make your life a little less miserable and hopefully your success rate with these stencils a little better. So the first step to this process is prepping the cabinet. You can see we remove everything from the cabinet before we start. And I mean everything, anything that is not directly nailed down to the cabinet, the monitor, the interior, the control panel, the bezel. Uh, all the electronics, the power supply, we want to get all that stuff out of there. And you can see kind of the degraded uh, original side art. So then we sand off everything. And here you can see we've begun the process of repairing the base uh, with a lot of Bondo and a lot of wood filler. 
uh, and we're also going to be putting in new leg lever systems. You can see the, the bottom of the cabinet, which is a little terrible. And this is kind of an arduous process. It's not super sexy. It takes time because you have to allow these steps to dry, go back and sand and shape and do it over again sometimes uh, you know, four, five, six times. And eventually you see here the cabinet starting to take shape. I'm fixing some of the interior elements that were broken off. Uh, and this is not exactly glamorous work. Here I've started painting the inlet. And what you may find sometimes there is uh, our, our primers going down is you get into this and you start even to the point of painting and you still find there are some flaws in the cabinet where you may have to go back and rebondo or and refill. So don't get frustrated. Don't think of this as like a roadblock to your work. Think of this as the work itself. This is part of the process. It's an extremely important part because the more you prep and the better you prep your cabinet before you're ready to actually do painting. Here we have our primer. You see I have a little hand sander there and sanding, a little bit of extra bondo work on the bottom. But the more you prep and the more thoroughly you prep, I should really say, the better you are. Here's our first coat of blue you can see that I did with the dry roller technique. You can use, uh, some people like to use an air compressor gun or a compressorless gun. I find uh, I don't have a lot of luck with those. I like using a, a foam dense roller with the dry painting technique that you can kind of look up if you have questions about that and uh, doing a nice wet sand across it uh, to make it nice and smooth. So there you go. We're getting close and we're getting pretty much ready to get to the part where we get to stencil the cabinet. Prep work is paying off. All right, so here we have our two stencils that we'll be utilizing on our Moon Patrol cabinet. And there's two sets of these, obviously, for each side. We have the, the base color of the cabinet itself, kind of that baby blue. And then we have this stencil, which will be the dark blue. And then over top of that, we have this one, which will be the yellow stencil. Now, compared to like standard stickers or decals that you might put on side art, these are a little different because one, they're not designed to stick permanently. They're designed to stick just enough to give you time to paint the stencil and then take it off without damaging the paint underneath the cabinet that you've worked so hard on. They're also of a material that is, I will say, stretchy. Um, so you have to be very careful when you start getting into the more, these real finite elements of the stencil. And why I will recommend strongly that you have to have two people to do this. Um, doing this by yourself is going to be an exercise in frustration, and I think your success rate will be diminished tremendously if you try to do this solo. Now, the other thing, too, I just want to point out in case I forget that most of these stencil kits, no matter who makes them, these were made by this whole game, will have these little triangles. Um, I don't know if you can see that from here, but the, the bottom stencil will have a pop-out triangle on three to four different sections of the stencil. And you want to keep those on once you take that first stencil off because that will help you align your second or even your third or your fourth stencil if it's a more complicated stencil thing. So again, it's an adhesive back that is not as sticky as a regular sticker. It's almost as sticky as almost like one of those cling window films. And then there's a top layer kind of this onion skin paper that will come off. So we want to adhere this base on first as best we can and then take the top level off. And it's a slow process if you do it right. So let's go downstairs and look um, real quick and I'll give you a couple tips on that. So real briefly, I want to talk about uh, some painting tools and techniques that you may want to use while painting your cabinet. The number one rule about painting arcade game cabinets and with stenciling or anything really is don't use latex-based products. Don't use latex-based paint because of a couple reasons. It tends to peel. It's plastic-based. So if you paint your sides with a latex-based paint and you go to put like even like a decal on there, it's not going to stick. It may stick for a while, but it won't for very long. Trust me. 
And if you use latex-based paint and stencils, when you go to pull up the stenciling, the stenciled part will come up with the stencil itself and you'll have a, a really disappointing result. Now, as far as like the, like the inlet of the cabinet and the sides, you have a couple different options. Some people tend to use the kind of tankless air sprayers. I don't recommend those either. If you do have a air compressor sprayer, those work great if you've got the space and the talent for using those. Obviously you need a paint booth for that because they do make kind of a bloody mess. People get really great results of those. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those, but the, I had a tankless kind of, with the, the little air thing that was not a very expensive one. And it, I think it's great for painting probably your fence on your house, but not so great for arcade games. Just very inconsistent, no matter how I mix the paint. So you can use rattle cans uh, if you're very careful and then do a lot of wet sanding. I think for like the inlet parts usually work pretty well if they're not laminated, but for the sides, you know what I tend to recommend if you don't have one of those air tank compressor sprayers, use these high density foam rollers. I find these are great. Uh, use oil-based paint if you can. Uh, highly recommend that you do. Um, and then you just paint, you know, consistently. I like to use what's called a dry paint technique where you don't just stick it in like a bin or a roller bin, uh, but you put a little bit and you kind of almost paint a piece of cardboard and you take that little bit that's on the cardboard and you slowly but surely do it. It gives nice consistent results. You're still going to have to wet sand if you want a nice, really good looking finish. Otherwise, you are going to see the texture of the roller a little bit or the movement because it's never going to be perfect. I also like to do this on a very warm day. I like to do it um, where when I'm finished with it and it's somewhat set, not perfectly wet, but not perfectly dry, stick it out in the sun, hot bake it for a couple hours. It usually works pretty well. Just make sure it's not a windy day. You all have some crap stuck in it, which is not good. Now, when you go to do spray paint, if you use like just the rattle cans as a general technique, or when you do your stencils, you want to make sure that first of all, you shake your spray paint the best you can, two to three minutes minimum. You know, shake this stuff up, clean your nozzles out in between, and then you're gonna take passes that go all the way across, and you're gonna step back from the game. If you think you are far enough back, take another step back. You're gonna use more paint, but I guarantee you the further back you are, the more you shake it and you have a clean nozzle, these things produce fantastic results with stencils. And you may have to do a little bit of wet sanding, just a little bit, um, if you get some streaking. But the, the more you stand back and the more patient you are, um, you'll probably do pretty well with this stuff. And I like the Rust-Oleum paint. They come in a huge variety of colors that a lot of times they won't have even in a place like Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, you need to stay away from paint. I know uh, Kryolan makes one that says like 2X that says it has like a primer built into it or such nonsense, but it's latex based again. And that stuff's going to peel right off with the stencil. So use good old Rustellium. There's a couple other companies, uh, art based paints that make a, a variety of colors. You can even get very clever if you need it slightly lighter. You can always do one pass with like white and then another real light pass with the color. Um, there are a lot of techniques of spray paint you can use, so, so don't be afraid of rattle cans. Just be afraid of latex base paints no matter what they are. You don't want anything to do with them. But, you know, again, if you happen to have an air compressor, you can match a perfect color and just go for it. Uh, eventually, I will have to probably invest in one of those. So. Anyway, remember, this is where the prep also comes back in. If you've prepped your cabinet and you've done your wet sanding, once you're ready to paint the stencil, you're going to be set to go. You're going to have nothing else to do. So when in doubt, wet sand some more. Uh, but remember, say no to latex paint. All right, the big day has arrived, and now it's time to actually do the stencil. So we want to clean our cabinet with some just you know, like Windex, which is alcohol-based, and just rub it off and let it dry before we 
prep it again to put the stencils on, I like to use a little spray water bottle to get it a little wet right before I put the decal on to smooth out the decal bumps. Um, these little rubber scrapers that are very soft, you're going to want to use one of these also to get rid of air bubbles and push as you go. Remember this stuff is kind of stretchy, so you want to do this a little bit at a time. And then of course your decal, once you align it, uh, you want to tape it down to the edge. Uh, probably use the largest edge possible, like the back edge here on the Moon Patrol cabinet so it doesn't move uh, as you do it so your alignment is true. Watch your edges. Uh, a lot of these decal designs or these um, stencil designs go right to the edge of the game. So using a friend, you're going to back off the back uh, decal backing paper just a little bit at a time and keep on squishing it down evenly using either one of those scrapers or a roller and then after you're done there you can see you're going to peel back the top layer very slowly because there's so many little finite pieces and again this stuff is kind of stretchy um, and it's going to pucker a little bit so you have to be very careful very slow and methodical uh, this is going to take time you know don't be surprised if it takes you 30 to 45 minutes to put on one of these uh, stencil decals properly and then take a break go slower uh you know the nice thing if you do use a spray bottle with water you do have some flexibility uh, if you make a boo-boo you can carefully peel it back up again a little bit and go back and then bam we paint our first spray there uh for the blue and we let it dry i like to let it sun dry in the sunshine kind of bake that finish a little bit and then there you go we peel it off and it looked great and you could see right up in the little corners you can see our little triangle stickers uh, we lost one of them towards the front and then we do the third layer which is the yellow layer you can see again we are peeling it and then it's prepped and ready to go in the paint booth hey wear that safety equipment folks it's it's good for you and then we painted our yellow and then you can see the result as we peel off our yellow here and you know we're just going to take it slow when you peel this stuff off um normally two people would be doing this but uh, my wife was holding the candle. You can see the yellow a little bit better here than you can uh, in a second. Um, it looks pretty good here, uh, nice and yellow. It looks a little darker than that in the garage, but you can see we have a little bit of overspray. Uh, and you, of course, want to make sure this is completely dry by the time you do this. Otherwise, uh, you could smudge it uh, or you could smear it or even flake it off. And this is where it's just super critically important not to use latex paint. Because if you use any sort of latex or plastic based paints while you do this, your hard work's just gonna come right off of the stencil. It's gonna stick to the stencil material and it's just gonna pull right off. But this is uh, the money shot here where it all comes together and you can see your, all your hard work, especially your prep work is really paying off. And look at that, it looks Looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so here we are with our finished stencil. And is it perfect? Absolutely not. Uh, probably the biggest criticism I have with it, as you can see, is the yellow came out a little darker, a little more of a mustard than a bright yellow, um, which would have been more authentic. It just dried darker than the original test had shown it would. But otherwise, it's pretty good. I mean, we've got some overspray here and there, which would be typical for this, but no major boogers. Um, there's some alignment issues that I knew were probably going to happen. We struggled a little bit with this stencil. And when we go to do the other side, I think we'll, we'll come out a little bit better um, with the alignment. But it's a lot better than it was. And again, hey, it's I look at it like it's part of the process that it's going to be a little weird. Um, there's always going to be things that you can't quite plan on. Like again, you know, we did we did the test painting of all these colors, and this yellow was much brighter. And for some reason, it just dried darker, probably because uh, I have a good bit of primer on this cabinet underneath. It may have affected the overall tone. Uh, I I just don't know. So, but it it looks great. I mean, I really, other than those two small complaints, I really can't complain. Um, I've kind of put the control panel on the marquee on it just to get, kind of give you an idea, you know, what the finished product looks like, um, even though we haven't done the other side yet. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I think if you take anything away from all this, it's going to be number one prep, number two, take your time. Um, 
follow the steps. Give yourself lots of dry time. Um, really don't be afraid to make sure you don't do it alone. You have to do this with a second person. Um, do test, you know, don't be afraid to test out paint colors. You could see if I had done a little more testing, I probably would have gotten my yellow a little bit brighter and I would have been a little happier. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, but I will say this, that it's so much better than the inkjet restoration prints because the colors are never right. They're way too shiny. Um, it totally ruins the vintage vibe. You know, stencils can be so rewarding not just the process, but also just, you know, doing it and learning. It, it it adds a little bit more of a connection that you may have with your game as well, just doing this process, at least I feel, compared to like just the stickers. So there you go, stencils. Uh, I wish you luck. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out with me. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, again, not an expert on stencils, but if I can do it, you can do it. Learn from my mistakes learn from uh, other people things you may read hey and just go for it you know if, if it looks great great if it doesn't look so great you know look at it as an experience uh, to further your investment in how these games were made originally so i wish you luck i bid you adieu and i'll talk to you next time